All right, we're back. It's time to adorn the trophy. Fire, frost, and lightning resistance. Very nice. I won't be using it right now, so I like being able to run long distances. And I'm probably definitely going to need to run long distances in the Mistlands. So, let's head back to base. And it looks like it's going to be nighttime by the time I get back. So with that in mind, I'm probably going to be able to pick up a Whisper too, which is very, very helpful. There they are. Look at them. Okay. I know we need one. Oh, the Wisps are coming. We have to wait it out a little bit. Okay. Oh, I can pick him up. Okay. Nice. Craft recipe is a wisp light. Can't make it on me. Can I craft it? On my, uh, with a hammer? Seems kind of weird, right? Probably got to go to the, ooh, maybe the artisan table. Let's go check. We're going to need a lot of these. I do know that on top of being able to equip one to follow you around in the Mistlands to keep things lit, um, you also have to, what does it take, silver? Oh. Okay, I have silver. Um, you can also make torches out of them, and that'll help open up the mist lance a little bit for you. Here we go. So this is our new thing we got to equip. And what sucks though is it takes the place of the measuring yard, which is upsetting because. I like being able to carry a lot of stuff, and, well, at least this will maybe break me of that habit. It's kind of a bad habit. I'm usually carrying more things than I need. Uh, let's see. Pelts. Throw the stone in there. Needles can go in here. I have plenty of needles for now. I don't think... Oh, yes I do. I do need these in the Mistlands. I need the fire resistance barley wine because... Well, you know, you'll probably see. I shouldn't spoil it. Oh my god, I just remembered something. We're not going to Mistlands without getting some chickens. We're getting chickens first. Oh, I get to make a chicken coop. I get to make a chicken coop. 1,500 an egg. Oh my goodness. Um, wow. <laughs> well, I guess I can get one. <laughs> Dang. All right, so now that we've got our chicken egg, we actually need a place for it to live. So, I went and did a few searches on YouTube for chicken coops, got some inspiration, and now we're going to make one of our own. So if what I'm doing here is I'm actually elevating the foundation by putting down a few small support beams and then making a frame around that to have an elevated look to the bottom, kind of create like a wooden crawl space under the chicken coop. This will very, be very nice because then we're going to have stairs that go into the main entrance and then stairs for the chickens to exit into their little play area you're going to see me build a little bit later. Now once we have the frame in place, we put the rest of the pillars in to make the aesthetic of the crawl space a lot more consistent as well as provide some support. Now once that's all finished, we can actually start filling in the bottom. This will be the floor of our main incubation and 
storage, and just the nice little hangout area for the chickens. So with that in place, now we need to level the ground a bit. Because we want our chickens to be able to graze. So that they can live their best life. Gotta have stairs, of course. Would be a little bit annoying trying to get into the building if you couldn't just uh, walk right in. So to close in the crawl space, I'm actually going to put down half walls. Putting in those half walls will actually give us an anchor point for the cross beams. And if we do that all the way around, it's actually going to create a nice uh, covered crawl space aesthetic. This method also looks very good for fences if you want to have a little bit of texture on the top of the fence and have it still be pretty functional and not just look like solid beams all the way across. Alrighty, that's all done. So next steps, we're actually going to create the play area for the chickens. Same way we did the crawl space. I'm going to put down the half walls all the way around. Now I will have to redo these corners because I actually wanted to do curved corners instead of the pointed corners like that. There we go. And now that the base fence is created, we can clean up the ground a little bit, level it out just a little bit more so that the chickens aren't able to hop the fence at any point. Because if they do, I can't protect them after that unless I'm there. And chickens are squirrely in this game. They like to run around a lot. Now I had some clipping issues with the half wall and the cross beams for the fence. So I actually decided I was just going to leave it at the half wall for now. I might come back and try to redo this method, but for now it's, this is serving the purpose I need it for. Now we're going to put in the walkway for the chickens to enter the chicken coop and to exit the chicken coop whenever they want to graze. So now that we can put down a door, we can actually start closing in the main section of the chicken coop. Now because I went to the plains recently, got a lot of tar, um, I actually wanted to go ahead and go with some dark wood beams around the building as well as for the roofs because it just looks beautiful. And I think it'll really help the building come together. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the grass here just because I don't want my chickens to run around in just a giant dirt patch. These chickens are going to live the life.
And now that we have the grass turned on, you can see it a lot better. So they'll be able to run around in the grass. And we're actually going to throw some seeds in the grass too. Because actually one of the most important components of breeding chickens is to actually feed them certain seeds and certain foods like barley. So that'll help them produce more eggs. Now that we put a forge down, we can actually build our dark wood doors. They're going to look very nice. And once I have the doors in place, I can start building the rest of the walls and the roof in around them. I wanted to use a dark wood door for the entrance to the chicken coop, but I don't, know, I don't like using half of a large door as one door. I, if, if I'm going to put down a giant uh, double door, I want to have both of them. And the width I made the building didn't really accommodate a double door without looking unbalanced. So as you can see, we're putting in the dark wood beams now. And this will be great for putting in our roof. I really love these archways. They really uh, make the doorway look so much better. Okay, so for the roof, after we bit after we put in these beams to act as, you know, the connection between the roofs and the walls, we're actually going to use a small support beam to extend out how far the roof comes from the building. So we create a nice little overhang. You'll see that in just a moment. Just like that, right there. Now, I did realize that I was putting these roofs in on the wrong uh, wall. I actually wanted the roof to be going the other direction. So you're actually gonna end up seeing me take all of this apart and redoing it again. just one of the drawbacks of really wanting a vision to come together. I'm doing the roof this way will also be helpful because if my chickens want to be outside when it's raining, they'll have something to hide under. If they don't just come inside. Honestly, the double doors to the play yard is going to be open all of the time. So they can come out whenever they want. One of them overlap somewhere. Deconstruct and reconstruct. They're overlapping again. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, uh, trial and error when it comes to building. Can't let it hold you back though.
it's coming along it's about halfway there and now we're done so now that we have the top of the roof pretty much complete we do want to still have that cross beam aesthetic at the top for some reason uh, the second beam just wasn't snapping for me uh, so I had to very carefully make them match up it took a couple tries There we go, that looks better. And we'll go ahead and trim up all of the sides. Just make it look nice and solid. Oop, gotta do that one again. So whenever you guys have problems with a snapping point, it's a really good idea to just put up some ladders and approach it at any possible angle to see if you can make it work. Sometimes it's just how you're looking at it. So close. Third time's the charm, right? Success! Now we've fully finished out the roof and we can start working on the walls. Now I am going to use half walls and normal walls to fill in the majority of these walls, but I also really like the dark wood uh, dividers. They actually make a really good design for making windows. It's actually going to help to give the chicken coop a nice open feeling letting the sunlight in And as you see, we're just going to keep doing this same design for all of the walls. How the divider windows are spaced out is going to be pretty much different for each wall. Just because one side has a door, one side doesn't, the other side has a double door, and the other side doesn't. I tell you, pack space is even the final boss when you're building. Or when you're just a pack rat like me. Let's be honest. I noticed that beam was actually protruding into the building. It couldn't be seen from the outside, so we did have to make some adjustments. There we go, that's much better.
All right, so now all of my walls are pretty much finished. There will be some little adjustments here and there. I do have to close in this top section of the wall that meets with the roof. It actually ended up a little off center. So we do have to break that down and try again. And we are gonna go ahead and uh, create our stalls for the chickens to kind of look like little incubation stalls. I use the cross beams and I usually use support beams to fill in the top and the side because I think they just look pretty cool. Looks a little bit different from the fence. So now that we have those, we actually have to put in some flooring in those sections. So what I did was I grabbed some deer hide and we're actually gonna use some deer rugs to look like bedding. Now we are also putting up some hanging braziers because the eggs do need to stay warm. I saw in some videos that people put a campfire outside the window to heat up the eggs on the inside. But considering the pocket I kind of built my building in around my other stone foundations, I wanted to put the braziers up just to save the space. And I think it looks really nice too. Nice and well lit. Get our chests in here. This is where we're going to be keeping seeds, eggs, anything else we might need around the chicken coop. But all in all, this is pretty much done. Oh yeah, the walls, I didn't fill those in yet. <laughs> Well, as you'll see in just a moment, I will fix that problem. I did end up getting a second egg because I found some extra money laying around that I didn't realize I had. So now we've got two baby chickens on the way. All right, everybody. Well, I just want to say thank you for watching this video of me making a chicken coop. I did it a little different this time. I definitely wanted to uh, take it at a slower pace just because this is a much smaller build than my last couple builds. The last one was the workshop and the one before that was the chicken, or not the chicken coop, <laughs> my longhouse. Let me know what you think. Uh, throw a comment, did you like the slower pace or would you like me to keep it more consistent with the last couple of videos? I really appreciate everyone watching. The fact that you took time out of your day just to watch my video is amazing to me and it is not lost on me so if you'd be so kind as to comment like and or subscribe I just greatly appreciate it it helps me out but with that said we're gonna finish up this wall so have a good morning day evening or good night, and I'll catch you guys next time.